I had coach. Okay, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions today. So um, I want to um, start with a statement that, that I have and the organization has um, uh, since we did not have a media session yesterday and, and Monday, uh, clearly all of this was not in play. Um, this has kind of been my first chance to uh, do this face to face with you all. So um, I'll start in and then when uh, I'm done with, you know, what I have to say, then we can open it up for questions. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there's obviously been much said and a lot of opinions given in both the national media and on social media uh, regarding Elena Deladon's medical situation and playing status for this season. Uh, to clarify where we stand, uh, the WNBA Players Association and the WNBA League Office agreed to set up a process for an independent panel to review cases like Elena's and Tina's, uh, and that's the process that was set up. Uh, HIPAA rules make it such that the player is notified of the decision by the Players Association while the team is not. Uh, Elena shared the letter with us, uh, but we weren't able to make an announcement regarding the decision unless the player makes a public statement first. Uh, and Elena and her agent, uh, Aaron Kane, picked a time to share it publicly. The fact of the matter is that the Mystics organization will never put Elena's or any other of our other players' health and well being in jeopardy at any time. Uh, as in the past, both with her Lyme disease history and her on court injuries, all decisions about her ability to play will be made jointly with Elena. She is part of our roster. She is being paid and is continuing to rehab from her off-season back surgery. If at some point later in the season, we are all comfortable, I mean all comfortable enough with both her physical progress and the safety of joining the team in Florida, then we will make those arrangements. If we don't feel that, then she will continue to do her workouts in DC and get herself ready for the following season. Her long-term care and health as a major foundation piece of the Mystics will always take precedence. We have witnessed firsthand Elena's commitment that she puts in to combat her Lyme disease and prepare herself to practice and play, and we are committed to assisting her in raising awareness about this disease. Um, so we'll open it up with questions. Okay, I'm gonna start with Michelle Vopel. Yeah, Mike, um, so from what I understand, so she is getting paid because the way this is sort of being framed is she's having to choose between a uh, salary and going there. And, and I, so I guess that's my, my first question is to clarify. And also, was her back injury something that would have kept her out anyway? Or, or is that something in talking to her that even if it wasn't for this, you know, dispute over Lyme and COVID that the, the back injury uh, and rehabbing that was also a factor in her not being able to play? Well, that the back injury has always been a factor uh, regardless. I mean, when the pandemic came, she was in the early stages of her um, rehab and clearly the last four months have interrupted that. Um, and so, you know, that was always going to be an issue. Um, but, you know, I think it would have been sped up uh, a little bit more had she, you know, not had to deal with the inability to get in a facility and do workouts. Um, that said, um, you know, she has a guaranteed contract uh, that is paid because, uh, you know, do, you know, whether you have an injury or not. Um, you know, I think that in Elena's case, and I don't want to put words in anybody else's mouth, I think she wanted to get clarification, though, in this process of, you know, not having the pressure to think about the other things. Um, you know, uh, the, the Lyme disease, I think, you know, she wanted it to be, you know, decided upon. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we have always felt that, you know, she was going to be a part of the roster uh, one way or the other, because uh, if she had gotten the medical um, opt out, uh, we would have had to pay her. Um, she would have counted against our roster or at least against our cap. I shouldn't say against the roster, against our cap. And so, um, you know, there was going to be, for the most part, her being paid. Now, if she had just said, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to uh, opt out. Um, I, I'm not, you know, doing anything right now. Uh, then that would have been a different choice. And, you know, I, I'm not going to get into whether the panel was right or wrong. 
Uh, it's the system that was set up and we had, you know, no say about it. Um, but, you know, she is being paid uh, as a member of our team, um, you know, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a decision, you know, I don't know when it would be. I mean, I, you know, we haven't seen her on the court uh, at all, um, and nor had we seen any of our other players on the court until recently uh, to do one-on-one -on -one workouts before we came to Florida. So um, I think she wanted, you know, some clarity about her Lyme disease and how it was being handled. And so, you know, that's the situation we're in. But she is, she is being paid and we are treating her, you know, as a full-time member of our roster. And if at some point um, she's comfortable as she, you know, and as she said that in her statement the other day, you know, she, she wants to know what's comfortable, but as she, she acknowledges that the back issue still has to be taken care of first. Kareem Copeland. Hey, Mike. Um, from a team perspective, I can barely hear you, Kareem. I'm yeah, sorry. Your volume is really low. Sorry about that. Um, from a team perspective, is there a time frame that you guys need to know um, what's going on, number one? And number two, say in a month and a half, and, her, you know, she's gone through rehab and her back's feeling well, but she doesn't feel comfortable being in that bubble. Could we continue to pay her? She decides at that point to still opt out, even though um, we can, she's gone to rehab. We can do whatever we want, as far as that's concerned. Uh, and you know, uh, we have intended to do that from the start. Um, you know, because um, she's a part, uh, a major part of our team, and she's making you know every effort to do the rehab that she needs to do, but. Um, I don't want to speculate what that's going to look like in four to six weeks. I don't think that's fair to us or her at this point until we see where she is. Uh, we'll have people working with her in DC while we're here, a physical therapists working with her, uh, people on the monumental staff uh, from the basketball side when she's allowed to go back in the gym and actually start some basketball workouts. But, you know, given the, the number of months off from this, uh, not that we're starting from square one, but it sure feels like it some days when you're trying to get back to the basketball part of things as it is. And so every time, as long as this thing has been delayed, it only added to the, the length of, of recovery time probably. Thank you. Uh, David Aldridge. Hey coach, you, you obviously have a, a very close and good relationship with Elena. And I just wonder, how do you discuss this matter with her? It's, it's obviously very sensitive on, on both her part, but, but you have to get ready for a season and you have to know if she's going to be available even in a limited capacity. So how have those discussions gone? Well, I basically told her a while back um, to not worry about me uh, in the sense that I have approached this summer as a, I, I don't want to use the wrong term, not a one-off, but it's, it's, a, it's different for everybody. We're not playing at home. We're playing in the middle of a pandemic. We're playing uh, in a different situation. I have told her that um, there is not going to be pressure put on her um, to hurry back. I don't want, I'm in this and she's in this for the long haul. She just signed a four-year contract, you know, and our team obviously looks different without different players here. And so, um, our, our vision is, you know, let's do what's best for her and our team for the long run. And let's make sure that there's a, there's a long shelf life to, you know, our window of opportunity. And, and, I, and she's such a huge part of that, that we're not going to rush her back just to try to salvage a season right now. Mm -hmm. uh, she and I have talked about it, frankly. Um, I've told her that she has my support, um, just as I have told other players, you know, who have had to make decisions about things, they have my support. Uh, real life and the world take over. Injuries and illnesses and everything else uh, are a lot more important um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that's all, always how we've treated our players. And so um, I think she would tell you that she and I are comfortable uh, right now talking about all this. All right, Doug Feinberg. Hey, Mike. Um, I'm just trying to grasp something here. All oh, so am I. Uh, yeah, I, I like the look of by the way. It's a good, good look for you. If, if you guys are going to pay her all along while she rehabs, 
right? Is that what you're saying in a sense? Why yeah. on earth did it come to this medical panel if she's on your roster and if she's healthy enough to play? She'll, pay, she'll play versus going through a panel that now this has become a giant PR disaster for the league. Um, I can't answer all of that, to be honest with you, um, because uh, the medical part of it was a decision she made to go see. I think some of it is just peace of mind, maybe. I, you know, I don't want to speak for it, but I think that, you know, if you have a panel tell you, hey, we're going to pay you and you don't have to worry any, about anything else, there's probably send some sense of relief that there's not decisions you have to make, you know, down the road about, you know, your health and your rehab. And I think that, you know, I think part of it too is that, you know, is also making people aware of the seriousness of Lyme disease. You know, there's a lot of conflicting opinions out there, but I think, you know, for her, uh, and, I, and, and I think she's referred to it uh, in her article today for the Players' Tribune that I just saw at the end of practice. Um, but, I, but I think a part of that is that, um, you know, there's, a, there's an awareness that can be brought to this and, you know, it can help other people down the road uh, legitimize some things. All right, uh, Ava Wallace. Hey coach, looking very spelt there. Um, <laughs> uh, can you just go through, obviously you guys are, you're used to playing pretty shorthanded anyways, but if Elena were to not go down and, and you wouldn't be able to replace her or anything like that, can you just speak a little bit to the difficulties of maybe playing with potentially a, a, a 10 or 11 person roster, especially right now where people might have to be in and out if they get sick? Um, well, first of all, um, I have planned our summer based on that premise. I have planned that we would be playing with 10 people. And if we got more than that, it was going to be a bonus for us. And so that's how I've mentally approached it. That's how I've approached it with my team and my staff. I've told Eric and Asia to get in shape, uh, so they can practice. Eric had, a, had, had some practice time today. Um, we'll get an opportunity early next week to scrimmage with a couple other teams and that will take some practice load off. And then once the game start, because we're playing three times a week, we won't have a lot of long practices. Uh, if we were to get an injury and get below 10 players, uh, we will be given a hardship to get back to 10. Um, and so, um, I coached in the old CBA, which is you know, now today is the G league and I got used to that. I, I have a lot of three on three and four on four drills uh, in my notebooks that, that we can pull out and use. And we've had to already to some degree. Um, I got players called up and down and I got used to playing with eight, nine, 10 players at a time. So I haven't stressed too much about it. It's just what is. And so we'll deal with it. Jen Hatfield. Hi coach, just wanted to get your reaction to the Kara Lawson hire at Duke. I think it's awesome. I think uh, she'll do a terrific job. Um, I sent her a message the other day. We've texted a little bit. Um, I think she'll be a terrific college basketball coach. Uh, she's got a great mind for the game. Uh, obviously, the Celtics saw that when they hired her, her experience with USA Basketball in the three-on-three. -three. And she was always uh, thinking like the coach uh, when she played. You know, we would have sessions when she played for me of talking about you know, practice the next day and what we could be looking at or plays that would be good that night against a certain team. Uh, and I think she'll be terrific in recruiting and she's very smart and she'll hire a good staff. And I think that, uh, I think she's going to have a great college coaching career. Um, Lindsay Gibbs. Yeah, hey coach, this is a GM based question for your GM side. Uh, in the CBA, there's, it says there's hardships, which is if you have basically looks like if two players are gone and then there's emergency hardships. So, how, so I, I'm back, just trying let me, to- Let me back you up on that. So <laughs> the difference between the two, emergency has more to do with you if you're at the salary cap. Gotcha, okay. So, so hardships have to do, so there's a little bit of difference between the two in that regard. Great. So it's all salary cap based. The reason why some teams can have rosters of 13 right now is because they have a salary cap room. For them. No, there aren't teams with 13 um, unless they have four people unable to play or three people who, who aren't even able to practice um, or uh, somebody's been suspended but will be back later in the season coming back from an injury and they have salary cap room. Um, but there aren't, there's nobody that has 13 practicing. 
that, that, not that, practicing, but on the on the official roster. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. There are type of teams. Type of teams. Yes. All right. Uh, if there are no no more questions for Coach T, I'm just gonna let it go. Uh, unless anybody has another question and wants to raise their hand. Oh, Michelle, go for. Hold on, let me get to you. No, you don't have a question. Okay. Uh, yes, and we did. had a good practice today too. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Michelle does have a question. Hold on. I'm so sorry. This raised yeah. hand too, too no complicated for old people like me. Um, uh, Mike, I just had a quick question about Essence and and what she brings to to your squad and just with the the, the veteran uh, presence that she has. Um, well, first of all, I mean that was a godsend to us to have her decide to come here. I know a couple teams were talking to her. Um, I've known her, you know, since she was in college, and uh, have always liked. Uh, the professionalism that she brings. Um, and so, you know, we needed, I thought, somebody who not only could play a couple positions, but uh, could bring us some of the leadership we might be missing in our locker room, <clears throat> excuse me, veteran uh, experience. And, you know, she's been terrific. I mean, she can play uh, three or four positions. Uh, she's always in, in good shape. She's a vocal leader with young players. She teaches. Um, She's been just a, a godsend to us uh, in this situation. I'm, I'm so thrilled to have her here. Thank you. Jan Hatfield. Coach, wanted to ask you about Shea Petty, obviously back on the roster as a player now. Um, are there places you've noticed she's improved her game, perhaps as a result of, of things that she learned while being on your staff? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think she's starting to see the game kind of through coach's eyes a little bit. Um, she's a little banged up right now, um, and so um, you know she didn't practice today. But she's been she's been good. Um, I think that knowing that she's going to have a bigger role has helped her too. Um, you know she was kind of in and out last year, replacing people when they were hurt. She now knows that you know she's going to play every night, and I think that as a player that changes your demeanor. You see, you have a little bit more self confidence when you're doing that too. All right, one more time. Any more questions for Coach Tebow? All right. Thank you all. Have a great day, and we'll be here soon. Thanks. <laughs>